Hello everyone. It was a strange intro, but I will show you the full statue again because I think I've showed you this at least once, if not twice. Let me step away a little further. This gentleman is Soviet poet, songwriter, musician, Wysocki, Vladimir. Yes, I think the first name is Vladimir, Vladimir Wysocki. And I want to show you this gorgeous statue from the back. I love this one. And we are back in one of my favorite areas that I never get tired of because I just love the energy of this place. Many of you know Pietrovka Street. You see the gold tower right there. This is the Pietrovka's monastery. Incredible place. So today, guys, what I have for you, I have three articles. Let me just get my phone in the right way. I have three articles. Two are from TASS and one is from a Polish portal. We're gonna have some topics here about money and then about uh, what President Putin has said yesterday on September 12th during the economic, Eastern Economic Forum, EEF, in Vladivostok. Many of you probably watched the speech. I haven't watched the full speech yet, just parts of it. Today I will catch up on that. Uh, but let's start with this article from TASS, which is from today, and it talks about how much money United States, actually sit in the sun, it's better, how much money the United States have spent on Ukraine. Lots of you already probably know the number, but those of you who don't, there you have it. United States already spent over $100 billion for supporting Ukraine. It comes from Fox News and TASS is reporting on it today. The overall number of US funds directed for assistance to Ukraine stands at $110.97 billion. So let's round it up, $111 billion at this point emphasis on at this point. Fox News reported on Tuesday, yesterday, citing a document by the Office of Management and Budget of the White House. The document was prepared in response to a request from a group of Republican senators submitted to the White House back in January. It contains information above overall amount of U.S. military, financial and humanitarian aid provided to the Kiev government. The document says that out of the 11097, let's say just 111 billion dollars, some of 101.19 billion has already been executed by the Office of Management and Budget. The sum does not include the new request for more aid to the Kiev government filed by the administration of United States President Joe Biden, who is on the strings of Obama. This is not in the article, this is me. So this new aid is about assistance, $24 billion, including $13 billion for military purpose. So how much altogether, everyone? Let's calculate. It's a lunch break, so it's a lot of people here around me uh, on the phones. We have 111 plus 24 coming. We have 35, 135 billion dollars from United States. I haven't looked at the US uh, GDP. Could you please, those of you who are in US and you're following this, can you let me know what this 135 billion dollars means to United States GDP? Now, continuing the topic, 
about money. This one is about a law that's supposed to take place in Ukraine about the corruption. And actually, I think the video I have done um, several, like about two weeks ago, it was like one of my first videos when I arrived to Moscow this time. The one that I was bringing the quote from Sergei Lavrov, Mr. Lavrov, about how long this uh, conflict in Ukraine will, Ukraine will go on. I mentioned about this portal, about this article on Polish portal, which was talking about the level of corruption in Ukraine and how Zelensky, Volodymyr, Volodymyr, how he said he will be dealing with this. I hope you remember that. So it looks like it's not going to happen because the Western countries has, have interfered in this progression. Let me just flip the page in the right way. Okay, here we go. This is from Polish portal. It was uh, a little challenging to find the portal where, which I could attach the links and give you the info because many of those portals I'm not able to access from here. But I found, I found one. So it says that after the signals that the authorities in Kiev received from the United States and other Western countries, the administration of Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky withdrew from the idea of recognizing corruption during the war as treason. And this comes from the Ukrainian portal RBK. <coughs> Excuse me. And it says emphasizes of Western countries and partners from overseas called. It was clearly suggested to us that the adoption of such a law will not meet with understanding with those Western countries and will not remain without a reaction, admitted the interlocutor locutor of the website speaking on condition of uh, an anonymity. In the RBK, Ukraine's opinion, the main objections to President Zelensky's initiative concern the risk associated with the excessive strengthening, strengthening of the powers of the executive and law enforcement agencies. Let me step away because I feel like it might be too loud for you. Okay, I think here is a little better. So, um, let me see, let me see. Sorry guys, I get sidetracked with the noise. Yes, so here is this. In the opinion of the Western partners, which is like White House, the adoption of the law would mean that the marginalization of institutions established to fight corruption, mainly the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine, NABU, in favor of the, for example, Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, which was supposed to take over uh, in the case of the most serious corruption crimes. As if they are not corrupted, huh? And on August 27th, I just have to flip the page somewhere, so give me a moment. Because on August 27th, Zelensky announced in an interview with the Ukrainian media that he had submitted, submitted... What did he submit? Submitted a legislative under initiative, initiative, legislative initiative under which cases of corruption revealed during martial law would be treated as treason. Now, that's what he said. I set such a task. Parliament will consider recognizing corruption in wartime as an act equivalent to treason. I understand that these regulations cannot be introduced permanently but I think that in times of war, it will help. That's what he said. The cases of corruption in the Ukrainian army revealed in recent months have led to the resignation of Defense Minister Oleg Sireznikov 
and the heads of ministry, uh, military com uh, commissioners in all the regions of Ukraine. The media reported on irreg irregularities related to purchases for the armed forces and a scandal concerning the issuance of false, false deferrals from military service. Oh boy. Okay. What's new? Corruption? No corruption. We do something about it? No, we won't. 135 billion dollars total so far. Cha ching Okay. Next topic. Words from President Putin. The rush that that is about Russia can't stop hostilities if Ukraine conduct counter-offensive. It's from TASS, from today, but his words are from yesterday. Vladivostok, September 12th. Russia can't stop hostilities if it's repealing an enemy counter-offensive, Russian President Vladimir Putin said at the Eastern Economic Forum. Quoting him now, from many sides, the people we talk to who are Medita mediating or would like to um, mediate, who are mediating or would like to mediate, say to me, are you ready to cease hostilities? But how can we cease hostilities if the other side is conducting a counteroffensive? What are we supposed to do? They will counterattack and we will say, and we are standing down. We are not Trotsky's movement is everything. The final goal is nothing. That's a bad theory. He said during a question and answer session at the EEF, the president said that in order to start a peace process, the Kiev regime should first lift the legislative ban on negotiations. Kiev officials should also state that they are ready for it. That's it. And then we will see Putin said. So this gives you straight to the point answer to when they're going to stop when they're going to stop with the hostilities. I don't think there will ever come to the point of peace negotiations unfortunately in my opinion. I think it will come to the well the, eventually there will be peace but I don't think it will come that soon. It will come to the point of complete destruction of the country and then there is no other way just to put the white flag, you know, you give up. There is a moment when you have to give up. You cannot continue like this. How much longer you can continue like this? Unless you come up with a biological weapon and then you have something that you're using against the opponent. And I think this is where we're heading, guys. The only thing is uh, that, in my opinion, people are much wiser now than they have been in 2020. And they can see through a lot of things. And they are not going to put up with a lot of things that they put up with three years ago. Just my opinion. But this is the video for today, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. I feel so much better today, just a side note, private note, I slept really well, which is a blessing because, you know, you feel better, you have more energy, your brain is working, hopefully, <laughs> I think my brain is working, it's sometimes overworking and, you know, everything happens for a reason, you know, in life too, and everything is about timing, I just wanted to say it for, for some reason. Everything that's happening in your life right now, this is private now, it's happening for a reason. So keep it in mind. If you enjoy this content, you can hit the like. Remember, it's free of charge. You can subscribe as well. Leave the comment, share the video. Uh, all the articles you find, as I always say, in the links in the description box right down below this video. You are welcome to join me on Locals, which is a safe platform and you can share some articles you come across there, your comments, your discoveries, and you can 
follow me on Instagram as well, join my mailing list to stay in touch. Uh, what else? I'm on Rumble. And if you feel like supporting my work, you can buy me a coffee that will go for my trip to China. I almost forgot to say tomorrow, which is Thursday. Uh, what day is it tomorrow? 14th? Yes, 14th of September at 9 p.m. Moscow time. That is 11 a.m. Los Angeles, California time. I will have a conversation with the one and only Mr. Andrei Martianov. So if you have time and you would like to join us, the link is already in the community page on my locals as well, or on the main page of the channel under the live section. Have a wonderful day, guys. Lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge and saving the humanity. Bye, everyone.